Hello everyone. Today we begins with the bilirubin metabolism and pathophysiology of jaundice. Fate of old RBC. As you already know that the normal life span of RBC is 120 days. After the end of 120 days, the RBC breakdown process takes place in the tissue macrophage system. which is known as reticulo endothelial system and the second one is the spleen as a graveyard of red blood cells so basically the rbc breakdown process takes place in the spleen once the rbc breakdown the hemoglobin is released which is converted to the cholecalcin which is a tetrapyrrole straight chain containing a globin ion now this a cholecalcin whenever reacted with the hemoxygenase enzyme it having a or divide into three structure one one is the globin second one is the iron and the third one is the bilirubin as we already know that this globin is a polypeptide chain so it releases different types of amino acids and the iron which is a reutilized or stored as a ferritin or hemosiderin and the next one the third is the bilirubin so bilirubin whenever reacted by the bilirubin reductase enzyme it is converted to the bilirubin and this bilirubin is taken up by the liver in this slide you understood that hemoglobin is converted or divided into the globin iron and bilirubin and later on the bilirubin reacted by the bilirubin reductase enzyme and it is converted to the bilirubin bilirubin is a unconjugated bilirubin because the conjugation of the bilirubin takes place in the liver but before the entry of bilirubin into the liver that bilirubin is known as unconjugated bilirubin and this bilirubin transfer into plasma uh, along with the albumin albumin is a plasma protein which helps in the transport of bilirubin into the plasma yes this is the bilirubin metabolism process there will be the break down of different types of rbc takes place which we release is the hemoglobin and as we saw in the, the previous slide that hemoglobin uh, releases or uh, break down in different parts first is the globin second one is the iron and third one is the bilirubin bilirubin whenever reacted with the by the bilirubin reductase enzyme it is converted to the bilirubin and the bilirubin before enter into the liver that bilirubin is known as unconjugated bilirubin now this unconjugated bilirubin enter into the liver or hepatocyte simply the hepat word related to the liver so hepatocyte is the cells which are present in the liver simple here the unconjugated bilirubin conjugated to the glucuronic acid and converted to the conjugated bilirubin now this conjugated bilirubin from the liver enter into the bile biliary system and uh, biliary system opens in the intestine or small intestine now this conjugated bilirubin is now present into the small intestine where, where there is a different type of gut bacteria present and these having the bacterial proteases which convert conjugated bilirubin to the urobilinogen with the removal of glucuronic acid now this 10% of the urobilinogen enter into the portal circulation and via the portal circulation it enter into the kidney where the urobilinogen is converted to the urobilin now this urobilinogen in the form of urobilin is excreted in the urine which gives urine a yellow color so yellow color of the urine is due to the presence of urobilin into the urine 90% of the urobilinogen is excreted into the feces as a stercobilin which gives a brown color to the feces the pathophysiology of the jaundice or pathophysiology of the bilirubin metabolism there is the excessive breakdown of rbc 
so whenever there is a excessive breakdown of rbc occurs that means that larger amount of the hemoglobin is released and larger amount of hemoglobin is converted to the bilirubin and bilirubin so there will be the increase in the concentration of bilirubin into the blood circulation and this type of jaundice is known as prehepatic jaundice whenever there is a damage to the liver cells that type of jaundice is known as hepatic jaundice and whenever there is obstruction to the bile ducts this type of jaundice is known as post hepatic jaundice before the bilirubin enter into the liver whatever there is increase in the bilirubin concentration into the blood that is known as pre hepatic jaundice second one is the whenever there is damage to the liver cells so the liver cell is not able to conjugate the bilirubin so this jaundice is known as hepatic jaundice and whenever there is a once even if the liver cells are normal as well as the normal rbc breakdown occurs inside our body but whenever this uh, whatever the conjugated bilirubin which cannot be able to enter into the small intestine because there is a presence of goldstone into the bile duct so this type of jaundice is known as post hepatic jaundice and the next one is the physiological jaundice of the newborn now the definition of jaundice jaundice is a yellow discoloration of the skin sclera and mucous membrane which is caused by increased amount of bilirubin whenever the bilirubin concentration is increased more than 2 mg per dl then the condition is known as jaundice now what about the normal bilirubin level into the serum it is a 0.3 to 1 mg per dl so in this photograph you are seeing the yellow discoloration of the sclera as well as the skin now the types of jaundice prehepatic jaundice hepatic jaundice and post hepatic jaundice this prehepatic jaundice is also known as hemolytic jaundice hepatic jaundice simply it's related to the damage to the liver cells so it's a hepatic jaundice and post hepatic jaundice also known as obstructive jaundice so the cause behind the prehepatic jaundice is hemolytic anemia and the hepatic jaundice the cause or the cause behind the hepatic jaundice is hepatitis cirrhosis krigler nager syndrome dubin johnson syndrome and rotor syndrome and the post cause behind the post hepatic jaundice is the goldstone malignancy or inflammation now into the prehepatic jaundice excessive amount of bilirubin is presented to the liver due to excessive hemolysis so as i already told you that whenever the bilirubin which is not entered into the liver but still present into the blood circulation this type of bilirubin is unconjugated bilirubin in the conditions of prehepatic jaundice there is elevated unconjugated bilirubin into the serum now the hepatic impaired cellular uptake defective conjugation or abnormal secretion of bilirubin by the liver cell oh here i want to say that whenever there is there is a liver damage it not a 100 percentage either 50 percentage 45 percentage 60 percentage liver is damaged then there will be the other other portion of the liver is normal so for example here we are taking that if the liver is 55 percentage is damaged but still the 45 percentage of the liver is normal so here this 45 percentage of liver cells conjugate the bilirubin but the 55 percentage which is the damaged liver cell cannot conjugate the bilirubin so here both the conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin may be elevated in the serum now the post hepatic jaundice here what ha what will happen uh, there is already the conjugation of the bilirubin takes place into the liver but now this conjugated bilirubin cannot coming out of the liver and enter into the small intestine because there is a obstruction into the bile duct due to presence of goldstone so there is the impaired excretion due to mechanical obstruction to the bile flow so there is a elevated conjugated bilirubin into the serum 
when this conjugated bilirubin which is not able to come to the intestine it is directly absorbed and it enter into the serum so so there will be the elevated conjugated bilirubin level in the post hepatic jaundice the clinical determination of plasma bilirubin distinguishes between conjugated which is also known as direct and unconjugated which is known also known as indirect bilirubin the reaction is called the van der berg reaction is a coupling of bilirubin with the diazonium salt to form a colored complex only conjugated bilirubin is water soluble only conjugated bilirubin is water soluble and reacts directly only conjugated bilirubin is water soluble and reacts directly this is called the direct bilirubin or direct positive van der berg test in the cases of conjugated bilirubin when it is reacted by the diazonium salt it gives immediate reaction to the color so this test is known as direct positive in case of conjugated bilirubin now just remind my previous slide in the conditions where the conjugated bilirubin level is increased yes you are right in the post hepatic jaundice to measure the unconjugated bilirubin which is bound to albumin alcohol is added here remember whenever the unconjugated bilirubin reacted by the diazonium salt it doesn't make any type of color change but when we add the alcohol to this solution to release into the solution where it can now react so when we add the alcohol then now this unconjugated bilirubin start to react this is called the indirect bilirubin that means whenever we are going to react the unconjugated bilirubin with the diazonium salt we are not able to observe any type of color change but when we add the alcohol to that solution there will be the color change so it's a indirect positive test still it's a positive but it's a indirect positive test because we have to add alcohol to see the color so this type of indirect positive test we have to find in the conditions of increased level of unconjugated bilirubin now remember in which condition there will be the increase in the unconjugated bilirubin yes in the conditions of prehepatic jaundice okay here the prehepatic jaundice hepatic jaundice and post hepatic jaundice type of bilirubin elevated yes you already know that in the prehepatic jaundice the unconjugated bilirubin is increased but in the hepatic jaundice both conjugated and as well as the unconjugated bilirubin level is increased in the post hepatic jaundice the conjugated bilirubin level is increased serum bilirubin or van den berg test in the conditions of prehepatic jaundice there is indirect positive result we are able to see because there is increased level of unconjugated bilirubin into the serum but in conditions of hepatic jaundice we are able to observe both the conjugated bilirubin as well as the unconjugated bilirubin so here the van der berg test is biphasic what does it mean biphasic whenever we react the conjugated as well as unconjugated bilirubin to the diazonium salt the color will observe immediately but when we add the alcohol into the solution the darkness of the color becomes increased so this type of reaction is known as biphasic response now in the conditions of post hepatic jaundice where there is a elevated conjugated bilirubin we are able to find the direct positive van der berg test and the next one is the urine color urine color is normal dark as well as dark in the hepatic and post hepatic jaundice stool color is a dark brown color in the prehepatic jaundice normal or decrease in the level of coloring and the clay color stool in the post hepatic jaundice aspartate transaminase as well as alanine transaminase which is normal into the prehepatic jaundice in the hepatic jaundice it's very high 
in the post hepatic jaundice the level may be increased alp means alkaline phosphatase levels it's a normal in pre hepatic jaundice in hepatic jaundice the level is 2 to 3 times increased and in the post hepatic jaundice the level of alkaline phosphatase is 10 to 12 times increase so these are the markers from which we are able to identify which type of jaundice is present or what is the cause behind the jaundice so here the pre hepatic jaundice which is also known as hemolytic jaundice hepatic jaundice and the third one is the obstructive jaundice this obstructive jaundice is also known as post hepatic jaundice right so in the plasma we have to see the albumin globulin and albumin globulin ratio why please remember chapter number one composition and functions of the blood where i told you that uh, majority of the plasma protein synthesis takes place into the liver so here in the conditions of pre hepatic jaundice where the liver is fully normal so there is the normal plasma albumin globulin and albumin globulin ratio is normal in the conditions of hepatic jaundice where the liver cells are already damaged and albumin synthesis also takes place in the liver so in that type of conditions the albumin level is decreased due to less synthesized by the damaged liver cell where the globulin increases as comparatively so albumin globulin ratio decreases but in cases of post hepatic jaundice or obstructive jaundice it's normal now the serum alkaline phosphatases as we already seen in the previous slide it's normal in the hemolytic jaundice because it is excreted in the bile it is increased in the hepatic jaundice because there will be the less excretion into the bile and the, on the post hepatic jaundice it's a markedly increased because it's not excreted in the bile now the liver function test normal as liver is healthy in the conditions of pre hepatic jaundice in the hepatic jaundice the liver function test are impaired as liver is damaged and in cases of post hepatic jaundice either the liver is normal or mildly impaired treatment treatment of the jaundice depending upon the cause so whatever either it's a hemolytic jaundice or it's a hepatic jaundice or it's a post hepatic or obstructive jaundice depending upon the cause behind the jaundice we have to treat the patient and other supportive therapy intravenous antibiotics intravenous fluid injection of vitamin k as well as the rest so here i only discuss about the physiological aspect of the jaundice as well as the bilirubin metabolism but the clinical aspect you have to study in the subject of medicine